And the interesting part about this is even though we get sort of these healing powers or these empathies or something here, number one, you can't consciously validate that there's your experience outside of this life. So maybe they button end it where these superpowers don't continue on to your next life. Because if I had them in the last life, I don't have them now, or I'm not aware of them or can't use them, let's say. And maybe it's only good for this ride, right? So then let's say these promises of afterlife or reincarnations or anything like that is a selling point to get you to go into that damn light. And here's another point to this is that <laughs> there's the idea is, is that this environment here is a reincarnation trap and that the light is actually a trap that gets you back here. Welcome to the consciousness of the way. I'm your humble servant and seafood Taoist master Sun Ching and it is Christmas Day once more. I get down to the tree and the universe has brought me an incredible being. And this incredible being is a just bursting with insight and understanding in all things, expanding your reality. It just so happens to be his brand. Welcome to the community of uh, the way 126 Brandon Thomas. How are you, my friend? My friend, every day above grounds go. And thank you so much for having me. This is amazing. Christmas for both of us. They come early. Huh? Right, right. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those common things that people can sort of, uh, you know, uh, vibrate to that uh, universal understanding, that feeling that you get where something grand is going to take place. So um, let's uh, let's start with uh, the the a little bit of a backstory uh, leading up to where we are today to just enlighten the uh, uh, viewer. Yeah, absolutely. First and secondly, again, thank you so much for having me, and thank you, audience, for hanging out with us. This is going to be a lot of fun and very interesting. Uh, this this has already been amazing getting to connect with you a little before here. But uh, to start at the beginning, I suppose a lot of stuff happened uh, as all of us in childhood and all those kinds of things. But um, the very quick version of it is, is moved out of my um, home at 18, just walked out, kind of ran away. It was under very traumatic circumstances. So that ended there. Uh, moved out at 18, um, went around a very wild psychedelic journey for about 20 something years, um, got handed the book Conversations with God. Neil Donald Walsh, which is a time I needed to find something, uh, and it filled you, this. Go and ahead. what did you think of Neil Donald Walsh's version of Conversations with God? I loved it. I, I lived it as something that it, it taught me something that I never saw as a possibility, meaning I was raised in a Baptist upbringing, very strict church, and then out of that came a very traumatic end to that church house, through that household, which then made me feel very atheist. I didn't want anything to do with anything. And then- wow. Filling that void was a conversation about spirituality or this unity consciousness was introduced to me for the first time. I'd, I'd never heard of it. And wow. so in the, my darkest moment, I get handed this book, Conversations with God, right? And then, of course, 20-something years later, I get to have the man on the show in episode, I think, 25, 27, something like that, very on in the show's history. So Neil's just as sweet as uh, you'd want him to be uh, whenever you're talking gonna, to him. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm talking to him next week. So oh, God, had yeah. you not spoken to him, I would have said, hey, look, uh, a big fanboy of yours is uh, Brandon Thomas from, but you've already had the. the you can remind him. Book. Please yeah. feel free to remind him because it really yeah. changed my life. I mean, that book really changed my life. And it was because it expanded me into a new perception. And I feel like that's what all this is. It's just perception. Mm -hmm. And I also will go ahead and let everybody know here just straight out the gate that I have no clue what's going on. Uh, I uh, also have no beliefs in this world at all. I actually believe in one thing, and that is in temporary truths. I think that the things you feel so strong and so certain and so absolutely sure about and is true for you is very subjectively true for you, but also yeah. it's temporary and it's going to change. Now, in mm -hmm. that, there's a very challenging construct to exist in a world that demands consistency and and all of those things and um, and have none of it. It's not a barrier. Uh, the world can be flat and round. I'm, I love the conversation. I'm here for the critical thinking element of it, not to get boxed into a box because I've explored all the all the boxes I'd like to to be able to tell when a box is a box. I'm like, God, if that's that's not what I'm here for, even though yeah. there may be some minuscule value in there, the juice is, yeah. is it worth the squeeze. Right. As as, as they say, I, so. Uh... I agree with you. I mean, uh, my my baseline is always your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. And man, so. yeah. And then, then we go into consensus reality and all these kind of concepts. Are we even in the same place and all of this? Right. And it's, it's all valid. It's all very it's an interesting yeah. part of the conversation it actually makes a lot more sense. But whenever I was going through that period, I was also, like I said, engaging in a lot of psychedelics. I'm not what I explore on the show. I'm not an experiencer. I'm not somebody who's had contact or a paranormal experience. I don't even dream for fuck's sake. Um, so I haven't had dreams since I was a kid. So I just go to sleep. It shuts off. I wake up. I'm up. 
So I don't have like this divine guidance, these spirit guides, these intuitions, this uh, inner sort of dialogue. It's led me to something very interesting, which is my dark night, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But getting back to your original question, the beginning of this, uh, in that 20 year period, moved out, moved around, ended up uh, going to China with my music, which was amazing. I was a touring musician, so I got to play in some amazing places and do some really great things there. Um, like two weeks before my second tour of China, I, I was in Houston, Texas, and my grandmother lives in North Texas, about five hours away. And she said, hey, I'm sick. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm doing. So I drove up there, canceled the tour, drove up there, come to find out she was uh, at the early stages of Alzheimer's. And everybody else in the family just literally thought she was crazy and nobody liked her because they thought she was mean. And that was my Gmod. She was the one I connected with. And so I went up there to take care of her uh, for her last days when she went through the whole Alzheimer's thing. And that was interesting for a 25-year-old to experience another kind of spiritual awakening in itself. And then in all of that, um, met my wife, uh, Mary, who I'm happily uh, married to. We've been together uh, nine and a half years now. We've been together 13, but uh, we live on a, thank you. We live on a 12 acre piece of land out here in Texas and it's beautiful. I had the whole exploration thing. And when grandma passed and all of that, when Gmaw needed me is when I kind of switched into uh, earth mode and, and kind of abandoned my search for reality and music and thinking I was going to do anything outside that box and all that kind of stuff. And then I just said, okay, well, I'll just go take care of her. When she passed, now she left me a house. Well, that's responsibility. So now I got a job, right? And so then I, you know, uh, stopped po smoking pot. We, you know, do the real thing and you you keep going with your alcoholism because that was what was handed down as a coping mechanism from your family. <laughs> so that continues uh, and is propped up and amplified, right? And then um, came to a point, 2020, to be honest with you, 2019, actually, uh, my wife was listening to something on her radio in her car. We were going to the store and I was like, what is this? And she was like, it's a podcast. And I was like, what the fuck is a podcast? I'd never heard of them before. And so she said, here it is. And uh, we ended up starting one because I was just so fascinated by this. Had 50 episodes of a show that's gone and scrubbed from the Internet. It'll never be here with uh, myself, my wife and two friends of ours. And then when 2020 hit, everybody kind of scattered and we I was ready to rebrand anyway and do a new show called Expanding Reality. I was already ready for it. I had a list of names that I went through. No, 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 not expanded because it's a verb. It's expanding. We're still doing it, right? And so uh, I got to this point where I invited everybody back. I had a list of guests that I couldn't wait to talk to about UFOs and all the cool shit that I was ready to bring back into my life and explore uh, that I'd put on hold for uh, like 10 years. And nobody wanted to come back. So I just sh sailed the ship solo. And now it's been over three years. It's been... Just released 271, episode 271, and there's been dozens of you know lives and things like that, bonus content, all that in between it. And it's been wild. It's been a wild ride. And through that up to this point, I founded a publishing house. I've published seven journals that I hand drew, and there's actually one that you guide. It's a guided process that I created to really get you in touch with yourself. It's called Mindful Expansion. Uh, they're available on Amazon and uh, Barnes & Noble, both, all seven versions. And... Um, so that's been awesome. And then now we're launching our events, which, um, you know, we can absolutely talk about here. And the we have an event coming up in May uh, in Georgia, which is going to be absolutely incredible. It's a befriending Bigfoot event. And it's got uh, seven days worth of uh, just all kinds of really cool stuff. It's five days of the retreat, but we'll be out there for the seven. And there's amazing speakers every night. We're going hiking through the woods in three different states. We're going kayaking, all kinds of stuff. So it's a very intimate conference. It's not one of these things where, um, you go pay to see somebody on a stage with a laminate um, and then they walk off and then that was the conference or you have to go pay for a book and stand in line and, and that's fine. There's absolute value in those. This is not that. This is, you're going to have, you know, Trey Hudson, Chris Matthew, Alexander Petikoff, uh, Preston Dinner, everybody, Dave Zed sitting right there around a campfire and you get to ask them anything or talk about anything and the conversations go wherever with all of us there, all of our minds creatively together as a community. So it's it's bringing everyone together and it's it's been a wild ride so yes that was the short version but there you go <laughs> wow wow you know have you ever mentioned your brain waves cuz i'm telling you you're you're high gamma my friend and it's a it's a great thing it's a great it's it's consciously evolving and being able to process many things at once it's a it's a skill it's not it's not the beta you're in a different brain wave but you know just a thought and that's a very creative state to be in. I'm a very. pure channel for the muse. I mean, that is absolutely what I say is that the muse knows it can come to me and I'll get something done with it. You know, music, art, anything like that. I'm just, it's through and through. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, that's an, an incredible introduction. So let's, let's talk about your, 
I wouldn't say disbanding, but you're stepping away from this exploration and sort of being sort of content with the present moment and everything else is transitory, which it is. It's sort of in and out. It's not really... Um, I always operate from present moment as being the only realized state that you can actually validate as the truth. Um, and you speak on that because you you went deep, deep. Would you call yourself a psychonaut or someone of that nature? Or used to be? Used to be for sure. Of, yeah. I'm yeah. not partaking in it now because of just some new ideas and a new perception I've got that it's really dark, honestly. And I'm not a fan of where I am now currently. My present moment, honestly, is pretty damn dark, to be honest with you. It's, it's full of um, just challenges in a way that I don't feel... Uh, strong enough to handle a lot of times. That's being very vulnerable. And it's yeah. just lately, man. It's just been a, after the dark night of the soul, it just capped, it kneecapped my innocence. It made me okay. feel like it lost, I lost that childhood kind of wonder, that explorative wow. quality that I was really excited to be here. And now it's it's a challenge, man, honestly. And it, it wow. a lot of it has to do with, again, this dark night, this perception that I'm not able to shake. And for a myriad right. of reasons, but we can absolutely talk about it. Oh, I would, uh, you know, I'm very grateful, and I know the audience is, if you want to elaborate on that. Now, personally, speaking from personal experience, I had um, what, I mean, Dark Knight of the Soul is, is some sort of like uh, coined uh, definition from some new age, sort of maybe it was Dolores Cannon. So, someone threw it out there um, relating to, you know, ancient Taoist practices that I teach people that are thousands of years old, there's a revelation where there's a soul retrieval that takes place. And within that, there's a disbanding of the construct of, of the humanist, which is the emotional state. And so what happens is you sort of like pretty much release and unravel all of that instantly. So I had equivalent to every thought, every feeling, every emotion for six days straight, nonstop, and probably halfway through, I was ready to just like kill myself kind of thing. And so that then there was an outside the other side of my reality where it was homeostasis, calm, whole, solid, full, all things at once. And so there was a realization and through that there's an alchemical uh, uh response that takes place and you evoke all these other things and from that you know your mental emotional state is just like euphoric bliss happiness joy and you know i do i have and will always help and work with people that have literally had a dark night of the soul for five years so there are events where these types of things take place and that definition can be variable for individuals tend to you know it's, it's, it's subject to your perception of reality and, you know, your emotional state is generally a, a catalyst to realize that that's what's going on. There's something happening where you are continually being bombarded with a, a deja vu, a groundhog day, a moment that you just can't, as you said from your own words, shake it or get out of it or whatever it is. And that's sort of something that can be very temporary if you, if you want to embrace the mechanisms that are very powerful to, to get rid of that stuff. And perhaps maybe you've seen it, maybe you want to, maybe you don't. I tend to help lead people to dissolve that because it's 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 within the physical tissue from a Taoist perspective, it's an understanding of that mental emotional stuff is implanted in the tissue itself. Yeah, the body um, keeps the score, right? Um, well, technically, I mean, many variables, but yeah, I mean, please share, yeah. It, uh, it feels interesting, and you mentioned modalities, and here's where I'm at. I, I'm at this fascinating rock and hard place uh, element, and I'm actually uh, within me now. There is a, a, a battle between the unstoppable force and the uh, unmovable object. And the answer to that question, do you know the riddle, actually? What, what wins, an unstoppable force or a, an immovable object? Do you know which one overpowers or the way to overpower that? The answer sure. is surrender. And... The interesting thing is, is um, surrender means uh, trust and that you have a value of that you trust in something either outside of yourself or within yourself that you know to be just absolutely so pure to be able to navigate your way through this. Right mm -hmm. now, um, in my personal experience, which is the only damn thing I can speak from, and this is why I say I don't know anything here. I have no clue what's going on because it's changing constantly. 
and in a very interesting and dynamic way. But what I will say is that I feel lately that what my Dark Knight of the Soul revealed to me is that this whole place is bullshit. And again, here's just where I'm at now, okay? Uh, this whole place is absolute bullshit. And it led me to uh, connect with the Cathars and the Gnostics perspective. And a guy named Howdy Mikowski um, wrote a couple books that I read, Falling for Truth and Exit the Cave. Phenomenal reads if you guys are interested in this kind of topic. And in these, they, they sort of go into a perspective, a perspective of the world that I had not considered. Now, what my Dark Knight of the Soul did is it, showed me an evil in my life that I didn't think was there, that I didn't feel existed, that I felt was um, I was immune to because I didn't buy into it. Right. Just like religion. Like I just I don't believe in the man in the cloud. That's not I'm not subject to that shit. But I have come to look at this place. Very interesting. It's going to maybe take me a minute to get there. But here's where I'm at. With the Dolores Cannon thing, just because you brought her up. I've, I've heard this argument, and we've talked about it, the third to fifth, third to fifth. Everybody's going from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. And I've just kind of paused every. I'm like, guys, where, what about the fourth, right? Are we just miscounting? You know, is it kind of like the 13th floor in a building in the old days where you just kind of <laughs> skip it? You don't want to have it because it's bad luck. Yeah. And I think that the fourth dimension is here, but it's an invisible layer with us now. Now, the motives for the fourth dimension sort of shifted my perspective on this place. Now, I will say again, uh, I'm not a fan of where I'm at now, uh, mentally or uh, where I'm at, uh, connecting this with how I feel, which is my paradigm, which is, we're going to talk RAS and reticular activating system and all that stuff too. But where I'm at with it is just sort of seeing this place as yes, there is a massive adversarial force here. Now in here, this place, this reality, uh, growth is inevitable, but in a prison growth is inevitable. You're going to just simply due to the duration of time, uh, the, all change is is right it's just time plus action and so you just sit long enough and over a certain duration of time change will occur especially with the environmental processes we have all of these kinds of things so change is inevitable and so mm -hmm. whenever we get to the idea that this is a school or this is for you and all of those kind of things mm -hmm. we're going to put a pin in there and come back to it's a school from from the perspectives though of like this whole place works on a so uh, for perspective, coming out, what what I was comparing this to was sort of the unity consciousness idea. This idea that we're all one, and that this there's a perspective of benevolent benevolence here that we're able to navigate through together, and that we're helping one another. We're going to be challenged. It's going to be difficult, but ultimately, you chose this. You signed a contract, or you have an agreement to come here and learn certain things, or karma, or any of those kind of concepts. Now, whenever I looked at these, I sort of they fell short for me. I mean, honestly, all these answers just sort of fall short. When anybody says I'm a being of infinite light, I can't, I'm the, I, I picture nothing like that. I, I don't, I don't get it. So I have trouble connecting with the things that people will grab onto and that's their fuel to just take off. I don't have mm -hmm. the fuel to take off. All I've got are questions because that fuel doesn't exist for me to connect with, right? In the same way I didn't connect with religion. Uh, eventually you get to a point where you need faith, meaning that you've got to stop asking questions. And in some versions of the Bible, if you ask one question, you're bound to the lake of fire anyway, just for simply asking, right? So it's this idea of inquisitiveness that I feel is one of the biggest challenges, though it's also a superpower, is because, first of all, it's challenging in the way that I am always a why. You know, why is this? Why is that? Why is that? And whenever you get to the word faith, that's when I peace out. I'm like, okay, I'm out. If your ability to get to something relies on your invisible faith of something else, then I can't connect with that. And this is the thing, right? Due to my childhood, due to my past, due to what I've been through here, I suppose. And yes, I've done a shitload of trauma healing, a bunch of things like this, ayahuasca, all of that. Uh, then I just have some trust issues, you know? I have challenges taking anybody's word on anything, um, not to what they're experiencing. And here's a big difference, okay? I'm not calling bullshit on the spiritual community, the contactees, the people who experience amazing, wonderful things for themselves. Because again, this place is very subjective, right? It's very subjective and based on you. So anything somebody else says, hey, I experienced this, I'd take them as, okay, cool, you experienced that. I'm not here to belittle your experience because I'm not experiencing what you are. But from my shoes, I don't get any of that shit and I don't connect with any of it. And that's what the show has been about is really just a search. It's I'm expanding my reality to see what's going on here. And in that expansion process, 
it led me to a dark night of the soul. And that dark night of the soul was a burst of the, of the bubble of my new age concepts that all of this place was benevolent or good for you or had a wonderful outcome or was connected in a way that we were all connected, playing a benevolent part in each other's lives, even if we couldn't see it in the conscious moment. That mm. just burst and went away. And when it went away hard, man. And what this is referred to and what happens in the dark night of the soul is what just what it's called. I don't mean to keep calling that, but I like that. You uh, you clarified yeah, that look. it's variable. Yeah. But the Jacob's ladder analogy, uh, it is where Jacob is ascending the ladder at uh, 90 degrees. Eventually, um, there's uh, these 15 different panels that depict it. But you go from panel one, you've got Jacob uh, standing there at the ladder, 90 degrees, absolutely opposed to himself. Now, in the last panel, you've got him laying on the ground with the ladder 90 degrees with the red king above. Now, what this means and symbolizes is this dark night of the soul is a grab of where you are and it shakes you and makes you look at yourself from 90 degrees sideways, right? And when I saw what I was, I was horrified. It was, I've never beaten myself up enough. I've never been as hard on myself as I was in those, in those times, right? Incredibly suicidal. I woke up every day with a voice in my head that didn't feel like mine uh, that said, you're going to kill yourself today for three months, man. And I'm not suicidal. So th yeah. there was a challenge for me interfacing with reality on a, on a pure level anymore and this is what i feel like it did it burned away this um childlike wonder that i had but it burned away some delusion too some imbalance that i was looking to clean up and what i found was when i was researching elements of let's say manifestation let's say manifestation let's just start there um the satanic community is uh known and, and brags about openly the fact that they infiltrated in the 90s in the spiritual community the idea that manifestation was this benevolent thing that was absolutely the way to go so they actually infuse it into the spiritual community it takes off as an agent of destabilization and the point of it is is to get a lot of folks into their feminine right is to get into this wishful delusional thinking of just let it work out and um just think right thoughts and and no pot no negativity and spiritually bypassing your way to the life you want now in that it's an interesting concept but the overall arching of it was is that you are literally destabilizing the fact that action is necessary on the other side as well. So again, it took a lot of males and threw them in their feminine, took a lot of feminines, threw them deep into the feminine. And then now you have a very deep destabilization of your brain hemispheres. And that just leads to chaos. I mean, it just leads to inaction. It leads to all sorts of delusional things that I thought were actually viable. Like I was down with manifestation. I've been manifesting the same thing in a variety of different techniques, ways, beliefs, uh, non-attachment, attach all of those things for 24 years. And I, will, I don't, I don't know if I'll ever see it, but I've done all of the things absolutely properly correct. And I don't know if I'll ever see it. It's very simple. It's very small. It's, it's nothing for the universe to just create this in a second. And it's been non-existent. Well, when you say that, did you get results? No. Oh, okay. I get well, nothing. Like I said, yeah, I don't I mean, dream here. I don't have like insights and shit. So I'm not sure if I'm on the wavelength of the 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 way this universe is participatory for others. And so this is just simply and I'm not a comparison curse kind of guy. I'm not looking around yeah. me going, oh, but they've got that and I want it. It's not that at all. It's a look at what this person is experiencing, how they're interpreting their reality and the effect it has on them. Right. And in right. my dark night of the soul, I saw the effect that it had on people, some really, really damaging, damaging things, connecting with some really interesting beings, claiming to be other things. Mm -hmm. uh, with then you start uh, reading the works of Carlos Castaneda. He talks about the mud shadows and all of these form figures. Then we get into archons and we get into the Demiurge and we get into Sophia and that this is actually a copy of a really beautiful, amazing place that sh that does exist, but you're not in it. And this is like the hardest stomach punch for me because this is what I connect to the most. This is what feels the most real. You can ask my mom. I've never connected to this earth at all. I get yanked out of the Disney movies as a kid for crying for the moms dying and for the horrible things that happen. I can't stand animal torture or anything like that. I, I'm not like I can't stomach this place. For most of it. And so I've never really felt connected to any of this shit here. Now, in that, again, uh, it's it's been sort of a, a process of deconstruction, but also like of hope and faith, right? I've had that to work with, but never experienced the results of it. Always just the hoping and faith thing, but then Whoa. really hard crushing moments that threw me the absolute other way around. And again, because of my childhood, I've got trust issues. And so with this, uh, trust to me... Um, is actions and words, you know, and I see a lot of words and don't see a lot of actions. 
well, you're in the right place, brother, because I, I don't engage in anything that isn't a show me moment. I'm a show me guy. It's like uh, the rest of it means nothing. It's all talk and I walk. And, uh, and in this space of, of spiritual uh, consciousness, blah, 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 it, it means nothing. I, nothing to me. I use ancient practices that materialize re results. And so it's like when someone goes, I downloaded something and my spirit guide came to me, that's great, but I want to sh show me that. It, I want to see it right now, what you're speaking of in relation to that sort of like um, mental, emotional, physical. The physical part is the stuff that I was addicted to from 30 years ago when I got my first hit on what you call the spiritual crack pipe, and I witnessed a physical healing. So that was it for me. When I see a physical healing, that's a validation in the 3D reality. It's no longer uh, conceptual. It's no longer anecdotal. It's no longer a hypothesis, a theory. It's real. And that's really how I operate my reality is show me the juice. Show me what you got in relation to this moment right now. And that let, that's it, beginning and end. So I, I, I'm on board with you 100%. It's just that the simplicity of things from a Taoist perspective is understanding that it comes not from the, the, the philosophy or the religion of Taoism. It's the fundamental Taoist metaphysics, more so a deeper understanding of energy, vibration, frequency, and resonance. And so when you take all the fluff and all the bullshit out of it, when you understand these mechanisms and they're not just a new age sort of I'll just, um, if you just want the universe will provide, uh, that type of stuff tweaks me out and I, my personality gets a little bent out of shape. They're like, you're a priest. I'm just, I want to keep it real. And the stuff that I teach people is being used for thousands of years by millions of people and it materializes real results. That's why I said, if you spend 24 years in that holding that line of the idea of manifestation, yet you had never seen a result. I'm impressed. That's a long time to hang out w wanting and waiting for something to materialize. Manifestation is this very moment. Manifestation is the type of shit where it happens now. It doesn't happen. And the, the distance between that 3D reality and it materializing from a higher state of consciousness, i.e., as we jump over, and I do it too, I, I'll be the first one to go. I kind of miss the time and space shit, whatever, three to five to ten. I get there, and people are like, well, you always jump over the fourth one, Shifu. Ah, it's kind of like a, a non-starter for me in most cases because I want to access a consciousness that can affect change. And I measure it uh, with the sort of like a measurable uh, effects of EEGs, and when you get to a brainwave state, that then materializes an effect, whether it's a physical healing, whether it's a mental emotional healing, whether it is a manifestation, it has to be tangible. You have to experience. I mean, again, blind faith is exactly what it is. It gets to a state, as you mentioned, delusional. It's delusional. We're not, we're not talking about a psychotic episode. We're talking about actual results. I mean, and you, you alluded to the Bigfoot event that you're having. Um, I believe Bigfoot's out there when I see him. Until then, I can tap into his energy, his frequency, all the things that are relevant to that particular, that spirit. But when I see it with my own eyes, then I'm in like Flynn, if you understand what I'm saying. It's kind of like that's kind of part of the measurement component because the spirituality stuff is a lot of new age and i i don't i i will not i always remind people when you dismiss other people's belief system you dismiss your own so i will always be welcoming to anyone in what they how they believe things but i will as 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 it is my position and what i've realized is my sole purpose here is to help people level up the collective consciousness but from a place where they're actually getting tangible results that can validate what the hell they are doing so for example if you spend 27 minutes in a meditation whatever it might be and you come out of it and you feel very relaxed and oh i sort of chill you're a music guy you alluded to the music stuff so you're a creator. So you go into a meditation and you've probably done it a million times. I feel really relaxed. Then I go down the street to get gas and I'm going to the supermarket and someone cuts me off. And next minute, 
I'm eye to eye with someone telling them to go screw themselves and your emotional state is, is e elevated to a level where it takes over your very thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And you're like, what happened to the, me the meditation state that I was in that I've invested 27 minutes of uh, half an hour ago and I, it's all gone. It's, it's done. It's finished. And so there is a, a, and I remind people, your emotions don't control you. You control your emotions. And so this whole emotional state, you have to be able to see it. You have to be able to show yourself. You have to be able to, part of the things I, I teach people is taking your emotions, your personality, putting it in the corner and telling it to roll over and play dead. And when I want to actually access that, I'll get it to come back and I'll resume programming as usual, i.e. my personality, which I like Netflix. I like watching, you know, sci-fis. I enjoy, uh, you know, uh, bodybuilding, powerlifting, things of that nature. But that has nothing to do with my state uh, or what I do on a daily basis in in relation to my my path, my job, whatever it is, in that state of consciousness. And so, you're shifting things like you do icons on a, a computer screen, and that's really when people sort of start to really validate what it is that they're experiencing because you need to be able to measure it. And so the emotional state is, I, I feel for you, I experience this journey in, in exposing people to other opportunities or alternatives to what their, what their simulation is at this present moment, and that they have the ability to shift that simulation and their experiences and what they're feeling and thinking with a mastery because it becomes tangible. You have to be able to tap into that resonated frequency. And when you do, you don't have to be subject to the pain and suffering that you speak of because it's a, it's a system. And, you know, like anything else, until you're exposed to it, it means nothing. It's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yeah, and Ching is talking about this stuff. And whatever, I have an experience that right now I'm suffering an overwhelming sort of blanket of a state of depression and, you know, no hope. And it seems to become more and more evident on a daily basis that I keep validating that this shit that I'm experiencing is more and more the reality that I have to accept is the truth, if that makes sense. It does. Yeah. But I have the same exact results in my reality right now as I did when I was the most positive, optimistic, caring, loving, healing, oh my God, holy shit kind, warm-hearted, playful as dude you've ever met. I mean, go check out the earlier episodes of the show, pre-200 right. probably. And right. that was just different, but it yielded the exact same results. So right. whenever you say, with my own eyes, I think it's interesting because that wouldn't do it for me. That I'm right. the furthest thing away from believing what the hell these things tell me uh, than anything. And the point of that is, is that there is this thing again here called mud shadows or archons. Are you familiar with archons and the story of the Demiurge and Sophia and how this world may well, operate? Well, no, I'm not familiar with that. But how how we perceive things is, you know, you, you're until subject to any further notice, you're subject to a duality until otherwise. So dualistic stuff is sort of the framework of the basic uh, beginning of what we do within Taoism, and we merge to a, a, a non-centric, non-dualistic, non-dual state of consciousness. So when when you're subject to black and white, up and down, in and out, yes and no, good and evil, which is a really big one, you're always going to be basically, as you would say, overshadowed or however you want to, you know, if I had a if I had a dollar for how many hundreds of exorcisms I've done on people that have been possessed by things that have brought them into their reality, their spirit, whatever they want to call it. And, and I, I do this as part of my job description, but it's, a, it's, it's created by their perception of their reality. They bring it in, they live it, they embody it. And then it's about shifting what is supposedly consuming their energetics and their physicality. So I'm not familiar with what you speak of, but I do understand what happens when you're subject to a, a duality. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you're basically there with it. And and the thing about it is, is that duality sort of is a mask. It's a it's an illusion in itself. It's it's the idea that there is this black or white here when clearly there's not, but clearly there is. So actually, the determination I've got is, is this, this is a place of paradox, man. And the challenge with paradox is, is it's intellectually unpalatable. Now, for me, I'm I'm pretty intellectually acute i like to i like to at least consider possibilities and be empathetic again i don't feel like i know shit but i do feel like i take a lot of information in 
and look at it from my paradigm, which has to do with my experiences and and yeah. uh, my beliefs, right? Which are fuck all. So I don't have beliefs. I believe that uh, we go through a series of temporary truths. And so in this place, I've seen so many temporary truths that whenever we get to something like, all you have to do is meditate or say this amount of whatever's, um, I'm, I, I did, I tried, dude, I, I tried and, and I blew right past it just simply because the, of where I'm at now with, like I said, with the archons and things like this is that there is sort of this force. There is this mist that's all around us and it, it can do anything it wants for you. I think it's what's behind the contact phenomena. I think it's what's behind paranormal Bigfoot, any of it. It can manifest as whatever you want to see, or it manifests as itself and your mind will replace it with something else like a Bigfoot, let's say, because it can't handle the fact that a demon's walking in front of it. Your mind will make it. You think that it's a Bigfoot. Now, the fact that your mind is so number one, apprehendable, number two, uh, subject to so many things outside of yourself that, are gaslit against you, but that are very real effects lead me to the idea that no, you do not have 100% control of your emotions. There's too much government tech here going on with them being able to beam things into your head and your house, sky to skull technology and shit that is at work all across this place that you can't guarantee that any thoughts are your own. Then you mm -hmm. look at the idea of archons or anything else. If you lower your, your vibe for this much, guys, this much, little squeeze, then an Archon can hop in all of a sudden now drive you wherever it wants. Now, the interesting thing about this is, is sometimes it's mutually beneficial, the people that you work with. Let's say it's Archangel Michael, okay? I don't think there's any such thing as anything outside of these Archons. I think it's all them fucking with people. And the thing mm -hmm. about it is, is whenever you do that now, you can look at it and say, well, then God, they guide people through all of these narratives, which is true. I mean, it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Again, I sort of look at this whenever you look at the subjectivity of contact and the freaky woo woo phenomena. Let's say you have three people standing together in a field. Mm -hmm. A UFO flies by, okay, or does it? Because two people mm -hmm. say, damn, I saw this UFO right there. And one person will describe it as a glowing orb of light. The other person will describe it as a metal shining thing. And the third person will say, I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't see anything. So who is correct? What is true? Now, what's interesting about this whole place, the obstacles in your life, the things that come up, the yeah. trying times, all of this, Number mm -hmm. one, it can be app apprehended by that fourth dimension, by that level, whatever. So really, I think that you're kind of more guided into a series of tortures here than you are guided to an enlightened path. Now, again, I'm not a fan of this fucking perspective. Well, where I am with the research is, is that I see way more things here out to get you than out to help you. Now, if that's for you to master and you to get over and all that shit, cool. But that wasn't clearly stated to me. And whenever we talk about this place as being sort of a, a school or whatever, I have a real hard time with that, too. Um, in Howdy McCaskey's book, he points out that stinging nettles every time, it sucks that you have to learn that in every single lifetime. Why can't I know that whenever I go to make stinging nettle tea, I need to, make, I need to wear gloves? Otherwise, it's going to sting my hands. Why is that something you have to learn every single time? It seems counterproductive to a school's modus operandi, which is to increase and build upon knowledge that mm -hmm. you've already acquired. Now, another wow. thing to this would be the unity consciousness idea, and then I'll stop. The unity yeah, consciousness no, no, no. idea that um, God is experiencing itself subjectively, right? God mm -hmm. wants to know what it's like to be humans in human form and to do all that stuff. You're already shaking your head, but to those out there still clinging <laughs> to that, I would ask you the question, why God needs to know what rape feels like all the time, or why God needs to know how many times it feels like to go to war or to lose somebody in war. It's, again, an interesting. So when I zoom out from the construct, I don't see it as a benevolent place. I see a bunch of beautiful things here that have been apprehended. And again, it's scalable all the way from how things have to die to survive here. Everything needs to right. kill something to consume energy for something right. else on right. any scale you go to. That's a hell world in my mind. That that's um that's powerful. That's a that's a let's let's get into it, brother. I love this because um, I always remind people uh, the universe doesn't have a moral compass and what's beyond that. I mean, ideals of, you know, perception, theories of the Big Bang or whatever you want to call it, how we got here. But let's uh, let's look at, um, you know, you notion certain sort of like um, understandings of the inner working psychology, uh, neuro neurology and sort of like uh the tipping point of perhaps what we could call uh, hypnosis in relation to the RAS system. And, you know, um, that means that you've explored uh, your unconscious uh, to some degree. 
um, if not at all, maybe I'm not sure. But I mean, there is a there's an understanding that you know when you that's why I reference the the gamma brainwave because a lot of this stuff is when I measure when I measure brainwave states, when you are actually in a state of healing, where you see physical flesh mutate before your very eyes and, and reset back to its original form. And it's not a reverse hallucination. It goes from someone who is very sick with a tumor and it disappears before their very eyes and it's gone. And there's no blood work to reference that weeks in a weeks after months after years after same, same event. Once it's happened, it's done is a, a state of resonance within a frequency that is a vibration of an energy in, in of itself. So there is this point, but you're alluding to more, um, you know, something that was sort of coined by a guy by the name of um, um, Monroe. Monroe. Uh, yeah. The yeah. Lush, the Lush in of itself. Yeah, Lush. Ominous, yeah. uh, ominous sort of, um, um, entity that that eat sit, basically feeds from the the essence and source of all things on this planet Earth, and that was an uh, that was something that he alluded to, and people like to use that as a, another coined term. And then you know I I have a a friend of my channel, a uh, Tom Campbell, who's an explorer, an out of body explorer, and we had a three hour discussion of the LCS and the a larger consciousness system that he understands as a a much repeatable model of his theory of how things are in reality. And, you know, numbers crunched for here or there. We went into great detail because, as I said, I got my crack pipe hit over 30 years ago of a physical healing. And that's generally the normal state of events for me on a daily basis. And we talk about entropy. So the entropy level of what is high or low, what kind of, as a dear friend of mine, Martin, who's a Buddhist monk, he calls it the dukkha, the distortion, which I refer to as the emotional state. And, you know, again, your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. We understand that, you know, there is the evidence of reverse hallucination and things of that nature in relation to your 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 psyche, your psychological uh perception of reality i do it all the time for fun i'm out here in nevada i'll go down to the strip uh with my kids and i'll find a group of people and i'll say hey have you ever felt really relaxed really like instantly and they're like no would you like to try it and their friends are like sure and sleep and they're like hey whoa and their friends are looking at me and it's like you did nothing you didn't talk to him you didn't have a conversation and now he's out cold he's standing there with his head tilted down as if he's playing a game, as if he's sort of pretending to listen to, to not listen to what you're saying. And he's cold, he's out. And then you program him, which is what you're speaking of in relation to media and all these other things. And then you wake him up, you erase his name. He thinks I'm Justin Bieber. I hold his wallet and keys in front of his very eyes. And I ask him where they are. First and foremost, he's like, Justin, what's going on now? I don't look like Justin Bieber, but in reality, in his reality, as this is validating what you're speaking of, he sees Justin Bieber. I have his wallet and keys. His friends are freaking out going, what the f*** is going on here? And I'm waving and I'm like, do you missing something? He's like, Justin, I am. I'm missing my wallet and keys. And then in the same state, bang, here's your wallet and keys. Oh, what happened? You've been in another state of consciousness for quite some time, my friend. And fr the friends are freaking out. They're like, holy shit, how did that even happen? Now, this is a, a, a resonance that I stay at. I don't need the old mesmer, uh, you know, look into my eyes. I'm going to use this nonverbal stuff. This is the stuff you speak of where people are being programmed. If you're walking through a day and you are listening to anything or you're absorbing anything, in a peripheral sort of unconscious state, you can take anywhere between 100, 200,000 points of information at once. You remember seven and you retain two. That's it. I mean, that's that's just it. here or there, the statistics of what they are. But then this is sort of like operating in what, what I consider the humanist, the stuff that I speak of where I'm actually affecting change in this 3D reality doesn't come from the dualistic du duality processes of the conscious and unconscious phenomenon, which is the state of human beings. I agree with you on so many different levels, but I also would ponder the idea uh, to perceive things in another way if possible, but your validation of what you're experiencing 
is your validation. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking you to erase it, but it's becoming more and more evident to you on a, a day by day basis that this is your truth and that the things that you're experiencing are it's what's going on. And this loosh is really the mainstay of what's happening on planet earth. And you see, I channel, I, I channel also, which is, a, you know, part of the high ascension of being a Taoist priest. That's one of the things I teach people, uh, clairvoyance, mediumship, channeling, physical healing, manifestation, all that kind of metaphysical stuff, the new age, spiritual, whatever you want to call it. But I've been doing it for 30 years on ancient practices that, in my knowledge, are tens of thousands of years old, and they've been repeatable. But let's just go back to this state of loosh and what that really means and where 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 do we go from there if that's the mainstay of where you perceive reality because, you know, the old expression, like attracts like, right? If you take a piece of it and you're getting the taste, you're saying that, hey, look, consciously, I did all that new age mumbo jumbo, laws of attraction stuff, and it, it never worked for me, but this is working for me. And this it, reality is a taste of what the truth is. Right I'm now. not a fan, not a fan, honestly, yeah. because it's it makes so much sense. It's sort of the idea that, and um, I love uh, what you said there, by the way. I didn't want to skip over it, but yeah. um, it, it makes it makes sense in the same way that scientists were able to plug in dark matter to the universe, right? They said, "Well, something's going on," and it's like controlling ninety nine point nine percent of this shit, and we have no idea. Uh, it's dark matter, and then it sort of explained the mechanics, and it sort of explained everything. Now, when I look at this place, I'm not a fan of this perspective, okay? What I see is a beautifully perfect system that is not for you and me, not at all, mm -hmm. all the way from ground up. And it's been happening for, like you said, the entire time we've been here. Now, at a meta level, you can't prove that this morning wasn't the first time that you woke up in existence. Like you said earlier, you can hypnotize people or something happened. There's a wonderful movie called Dark City. It came out in 98. Awesome movie if you've ever seen it. It was, it was the precursor to the Matrix movies. But in that, they shut everybody down, and then they rechange their identities. Now, you're a, you're a doctor now, and your name is something different. You're married to this other person over here, and every single night they do this. So you don't know. You're implanted with memory. So how do you know that that's not what's going on with you? You can't prove it. And here's the challenge when you get to this stuff intellectually is you see paradoxes everywhere that you can't overcome. You can't prove intellectually all these falsifiables or unprovables, not unfalsifiables or unprovables, Right. There's no way for us to hop out and go, actually, I can verify that that's not an option of experience so we can move on. This is the part I'm at. I can't hop out of my experience and look at it and go, I can actually move on from this perspective because I can unsee it in a way. Or I can at least see it as valuable in these ways, but not overarching as I do in this case. So it's the only thing I can think of is that it's got to be useful in some degree because right now I'm sitting here saying two people channeling, two people that are saying that they've connected with things that are, I don't care how old, um, that there is there's a question to be had with whatever you're connecting with and its motives connecting with you. Now, my question usually is to people talking to Archangel Michael or anyone that they feel is of benevolence to them that is in the paranormal or at least the spiritual or freaky woo-woo or something outside of the normal Let's just call it everyday 3D reality, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you're connecting with something, number one, what is it? Number two, what is its motives? Number three, what is its exchange of energy with you? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe you as a healer don't have any negative side effects, but with going in league with this entity, whatever it is, if it's true to you or if it has to be true to you, because we'll talk about free will in a minute, uh, then maybe it's being honest with you, maybe it's not. But Maybe then it's implanting in you the ability to go out, heal people, meaning to pull trauma out, which then it experiences through you, which you then cleanse out, right, and release. Uh, and then also, though, in the exchange, there's an implant of something that then is sort of a hive creativity that then this entity gets to visit these people independently. Now, some people may find it awesome and altruistic, but I can say also they're going to encounter a lot of tower moments. Another right. thing to this is whenever people say that they contact something or they start channeling something that all sort of ancillary phenomena will be occurring with this as well. They'll start seeing UFOs. They'll start having poltergeist accounts happening in the house. Something will fall off the wall, whatever. Uh, maybe somebody sees a Bigfoot missing time, perhaps. Now, what I think is occurring here is, is that you just signed up for this whole gamut of exploration into whatever you've signed up for that you didn't ask enough questions about from my perspective. But it's not to say that you're not helping people along the way. I think this is such a long game thing that we at our micro scale 
don't see that we are the energy source that powers this place, but it powers it through negativity. It powers mm -hmm. it through strife and through mm -hmm. chaos. And that's what it prefers the taste of. It seems that mm -hmm. that's what is combustible here. Nice things, good energy, good vibes, this utopia, this fifth dimension. It, it seems like asking people on a huge scale globally to go vegan. They're not going to change their palate is what I feel, okay? And again, whenever we look at this at a huge level, these things are the same thing, but it pictures itself as everything. It can be Jesus. It can be Buddha. It can be Shiva. It can be any of this shit. Now, when you consider that, I don't know where you go from there because now, like you said, if, if it shows up to me, I'm not going to be impressed. I'm going to ask it too many damn questions. It's going to want to go away because it's not going to be able to get me into a state to where I'm going to listen to it because I'm going to be asking it where it's from, what its motives are, what its exchange of energy is with me interacting with it. And I've got too much distrust with it over the fact that something just blipped into my existence or wants to take me on a ride on a UFO. I'm not blown away by that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to be distracted by the dangling keys of some connection that I don't look further into simply because it's fantastic. And this is the point here. All it has to do is dangle some amazing keys and take you on a UFO or do some lights or make you see something or make you heal someone, which again, all physical matter here is manipulated from that environment. So of course they can make you heal. Of course they can make you walk on water, all that shit. Now, whenever you consider this, how do you trust any of it? That's my question. Well, well uh, 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 it's a great question. I always start with the, you know, the fundamentals within Taoism, why they're, it's so appealing to a lot of people. It's more the internal alchemy practices, right? So we're very, very powerful in the main vein of magic, right? So any emperor through the history of China has had their Taoist advisor because the alchemy is second to none. That was uh, discovered and generated by the Yellow Emperor 10, 20,000 years ago through the whispers of the universe that is the infrastructure of Chinese medicine as you know it today. So understanding the 12 meridians, uh, just Qigong energetics in of itself, understanding the fundamentals of electromagnetic field that basically is the major general foundation of your life force is a, a baseline. So when I teach people to separate the electro electric from magnetic and i'm able to give you an electric charge from my physicality is just manipulating the energy within a duality now when we're when we're tapping into a physical healing from another dimension that goes up on the uh, spectrum of what a physicist would call the zero point the zero point the scalar energy which is basically at the lip of a black hole the event horizon within that is is zero point right and they've become more familiar with this state giving the foundation of fundamental understanding of what quantum physics is within an entanglement this is how people perceive it right they're they're justifying this language that is only a couple of hundred years old this is quantum physics in of itself is maybe a hundred this is how we validate what's going on this is the concept, you know, the unified field the theory. Everything's a theory. I say I love a lot of different theories in of itself. Technically, through your validation, you're still sharing with us a theory of how you perceive reality, which is this other paradox and mind screw that you're having. It's like, holy moly, hang on a second. This is still another theory. This is how I've perceived it. And then I brought it up. It's like, where does it end? And I would say, what I say to a lot of people is if you're thinking you're not knowing, if you're knowing you're feeling, there's a feeling element that gives you this validation. There must be some way that you, you have at some point connected with your heart or your knowing because you alluded to it. You actually mentioned that you're dragged out of Disney movies. Your, your, your empathy, your ability to, to connect with humanness understanding that you know you don't want to see the slaughtering of a sentient being or the death of anyone in any way shape or form tells me that you have a connection with this um, this emotional state and you're able to relate to something so there's something going on there there's a validation yet in relation to the concepts or ideas of this manifestation the secret bloody blah blah whatever it is it's never been validated by you the the, the louche, perhaps, is far more realistic for you in relation to how this mechanism is, is operating. And I would say, and you know, this comes directly from Latsu, who I've been channeling over 30 years, 
And he always says human beings are so caught up in this idea that it's about them. And that's the mistake. It's like, oh, consciousness is measuring all this. And no, 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 no. No, that's how you are justifying your journey and your your position in this this facet of consciousness, as we call it, and what people are perceiving is that by justifying your very journey. And when people ask him about simple things like, well, what's going to happen with 2024 is the death and destruction. And his answer is really simple. You're like a, gr a grain of sand asking the beach, what are we doing today? And the second you fall back into the beach, you can become realized. You have not had a moment of that that you want to validate as your reality. Yet when you can tap into all things at once, this still brings you to the point of, well, if you can, who's giving you that access and why? And I, I love that. I love that. But I would also say that whatever you invest in, the old expression, the glass is half empty or glass is half full, the premise that you are actually believe in this laws of attraction, which I do not. And when people bring up laws of anything, I'm, that's the first red flag for me, in my opinion, because that's not how the universe sort of creates in my opinion, my experience, my perception. But then again, most people use some type of uh, hermetic, comedic sort of like principles to justify their very experience. So it, it's an interesting one because you're bringing up all these points um, and it still comes back to what can you validate as your reality and what, what does it mean to you? And personally, if we had Tom Campbell here, it'd be like, okay, the biggest red flag is fear itself. So the fact that you are in a, a fear state that is subsectional and subject to many things, subsections, anxiety, uh, uh, sadness, uh, uh, emptiness, uh, uh, hopelessness, depression, all these things are variables of that very state of fear. And so, okay, what what is it, what happens next at this point? Because we're both in a place in a position where, hey, look, I've experienced enough that I believe this is reality. And, and guess what? I'll go right back to what I say. I said before at the beginning of this podcast, we, the second you dismiss someone's belief system, you dismiss your own. So I'm absolutely uh, uh, embrace it and embody what you're saying and validate it as your perception, your truth as you know it. And there's there's nothing absolutely fundamentally wrong with that. I would say that I've had so many experiences that go over and over and over and over again, that go way beyond the construct of the very uh, ancient techniques that I've been taught to teach people how to harness energy per se, not just as a fundamental new age word, but actually transmute it within your physical body so that you can conduct certain things like magic manifestation, healing, and then it becomes valid. And, but then we come back to, you're bringing up a point, well, okay, you're able to do that, but who's giving you that power? And then what is the cost and cause of that? And I mean, it, it's it's fascinating because we could really literally go around in circles and there's nothing wrong with it. I love it. I, I love hearing more insight into the very nature of how we perceive things because there is no right or wrong, but I promise you the audience will listen and validate what it is. And this this seems to be a very, because you said you spent a lot of time working out trauma release and things of that nature. Now, if you just go to the fundamental, um, you know, um, kinetic, uh, uh, kinesthetic feeling that you're getting of a release, a trauma release. So there is some understanding, a fundamental belief that that stuff exists inside your physicality or perhaps maybe your brain between your ears, however you perceive it, it's stored somewhere. And if you're releasing that trauma, there is some validation that there's a processes. Now, if you're sitting on a couch and you have a therapist or a psychologist giving you the very rundown of what you resonate with that you believe is helping you release this stuff, there's always neurologically very simplistic ways to understand where this stuff gets stored. From a, from a Taoist, it goes within the five organs, the five, five ma major organs of the body, and then there's subsections of energy centers that store this stuff. And that's where I do black op uh, drive-by psychic readings, where I can walk up to anyone, and this is just a validation, and give them their mental, emotional, and physical state in about 30 seconds. And they're like, how the hell do you even know anything about me? You've never met me before. Because it's just information that I can see in their field that's stored within their energy centers. And it's a clear sense, a sensory perception that I was trained in to develop 
that I can see this stuff. And that to me is a validated shift for someone to go, well, what the f how I mean, it doesn't make sense. I'm not seeing colors, I'm not seeing anything. You don't know me. How how could you even get a little dip of information about who I am from looking at me? Because in their reality, their senses can't validate that or they can't perceive it as tangible. So it mustn't exist. But then there's a shift of consciousness that they go, well, everything he said was correct. And it, it I feel very vulnerable. So there's something going on now, whether they go, this is way too much. I've got to take a deep breath in and walk in the other direction. And I'll just leave that in the corner somewhere and never address the fact that there's definitely another shift of information, some level of consciousness that takes place. And that's fundamentally why I do those types of things is to give people another perspective of their reality that goes, well, I may be skeptic. I may be uh, minimalist. I may have a different view of reality. But that actually took place. And so now what do you do with it? Hopefully someone will take it and go, turn the dial up and move into a, a wider lens of reality. And some people will go, hell no, it's not happening. I'm just going to put that back down and go in the other direction. And this is where the, you talk about the psychosis. Pretend it never happened, but it did. And I still... I still agree with you, you know, okay, well, well you're getting these superpowers of, of per se or whatever you want to call them. Who's giving them to you? Well, I, I validate it from a certain resonance and, and Tom Campbell validates it too from his own experience. And that's just his experience. He's been doing out of body stuff for 60 years. Um, you know, Bob Munro and the Munro Institute sort of helping people understand out of body, near death experience, all that kind of good stuff. You know, astral projection, I train people in that have for decades. The bottom line is, is there's an entropy that is lowered only due to lack of distortion. And that would then be on the spectrum of identifying that emotional states would have an alteration of your lens of what you perceive as reality. Yeah, 100%. So, I mean, I mean, th that's something to ponder. What are your thoughts on that? No, I, I think you're absolutely correct in that. And what I think also is a lot of the time, what we're doing here in this reality is um, fixing flat tires. And there's a guy named Richard Rose who has a wonderful quote, again, in Howdy Mikowski's book, Falling for Truth. And his quote is, I'm not interested in repairing flat tires. I'm interested in getting the nails off of the highway. And the whole point to that is, is that there's a systemic issue here. I feel that there is something huge wrong here. And the whole point about it is, is that I, like you said, it's a feeling, it's an emotion. I don't want this, man. And if this is some sort of enlightened perspective that I'm here to share with the world, it feels uh, shitty. Like, I'm not a fan of this, dude. I'd rather be, um, I'd rather be authentic. And that's what I am. So that's what it is. But if I have a preference, which here's 100% of my issue, I have a preference, right? And I think this is the whole point of humans. Biggest downfall is we have preferences. We have preferences that we don't get. Uh, that, you know, that we have a safe place for our ideas to grow, that we have all the things that we need provided for us and in, in a smooth way that where we don't have to take from someone else to then be able to survive here. And this environment's not set up that way. Now, as much as I'd like for it to be, or as much as I'd like for the people to rise up, I think, again, there is a systemic underlying environment here that won't allow it. There's, there's always a kick the can down the road, Messiah coming back or fifth dimension happening or ascension to whatever. And the interesting part about this is even though, we get sort of these healing powers or these empathies or something here. Number one, you can't consciously validate that there's your experience outside of this life. So maybe they button end it where these superpowers don't continue on to your next life. Because if I had them in the last life, I don't have them now or I'm not aware of them or can't use them, let's say. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's only good for this ride, right? Mm -hmm. So then let's say these promises of afterlife or reincarnations or anything like that is a selling point to get you to go into that damn light. And here's another point to this is that... <laughs> There, the idea uh, is that this environment here is a reincarnation trap and that the light is actually a trap that gets you back here. And that any time you have a near-death experience and you come back different, those were archons getting you to sold on the idea that you should tell everybody that there's something else cool going on and that there's something to look forward to in that light. Now, the interesting part, too, is a lot of people will talk about that they go to that light, but they recognize it as the moon. And then it was a shitty experience. It was like a prison. And then they come back, and so they tell us that. But those get squashed by the percentage of those people who say, oh, I come back and they don't, everything's great. Or like, it's not Jesus, but I feel so spiritual now. And they find themselves and all of that. And the interesting part is the message is always they come back with is connect with guides, 
uh, go to the light. But that, again, can be a disinformation campaign from the other side coming here. Do you see how deep this shit goes? Do you oh, see how, I, like, I love it, man. But I mean, I'm, I'm like, come I on. I just, I, I'm, I'm a real uh, it's a really weird because uh, maybe this reincarnation, if you believe in it at all. Um, again, it's like soul contracts and all this stuff. I, I think that's awesome that people have that. I've gone past the threshold of, of exploring other dimensions. Personally, I spent 14, 15 hours exploring 36 dimensions at one point. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. From a Taoist perspective, you get in there, it's just phosphorus white light, and then it goes to void darkness. And in between there is the offshoots of any sort of uh, a scenario that you could possibly imagine can be possible. And that's sort of like how I've perceived it, how I've experienced it from a, 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 a kinesthetic experience, a visual, audible, the whole thing, recorded it. That's great. That's my experience. What happens when I get outside of what we call the physicality, this 3D reality. And then when I hear people that have soul contracts and all that kind of good stuff, I think it's great. But I also then start working on the PSYOP where people start hearing about it enough. So when they do have experiences, they're generating and gravitating to that very notion. And then it leads back to how you're saying, well, isn't it all just a delusional illusion of something else? And there's, there's merit to that also. And so uh, I always come back to your truth is the only truth you need to be concerned with. And that until otherwise noted, then we get to willpower or will, free will. And I always talk to people that there's no such thing until you're otherwise, till otherwise, till you can actually level up on consciousness, you are you don't have any free will. And so example in point was just what I told you about that guy. If you can be hypnotized like that, and that's a very powerful state, that means that person is has the ability to focus intently very quickly. That's not a negative, in my opinion. It never has been. It's a very powerful state to be in. But until otherwise noted, I could also program that person to go walking for another half an hour. And then the next person that comes by them and that the, the first person they set their eyes on in 29 minutes and 36 seconds is going to be Mick Jagger. That's exactly what they'll see because that's a programming. So it's absolutely possible. So then where does it go? Oh, well, it's, it's really, you know, if you don't want to be hypnotized, you won't be that. Well, that's just a pattern, a, a bold-faced lie. Yeah. Um, the truth is that you can be at will, and a lot of hypnotists will, will say that because they don't want people to perceive the idea that they could be manipulated. And, you know, generally speaking, how we work on karmic models within Taoism is quite simple. Um, you're subject to karma as you perceive it. So if you believe in a duality, you believe in right and wrong, up and down, good and bad, in and out, then you will be subject to that. And that's where a lot of, in the, in the human history, you see megalomaniacs that rise and do heinous, horrible things to humanity, and then they fall. And you ask, well, how is that possible? How could God possibly do that? Well, I bring it right back to the simplicity of finally they stopped believing in the bullshit that they were putting out and they were subject to the very understanding of their karmic model, which there will, I will pay for the heinous crimes that I have committed. That goes back to the duality. But if they were able to resonate and hold that, that state where they believed that they could massacre and kill millions of people and, and not lose an ounce of sleep over it, then they could continue their reign indefinitely Yet that's not what happens because human beings are subject to the emotional state. And that's the part that I love to help people master. That is like putting on and off your underwear. You, you're, you should never erase your personality. That was given to you as part of, the, as you would say, the simulation, the experience, whatever's going on. And you should be able to be able to ship in, shift into other dimensions at will. And that's what I teach people for what you would call benevolent reasons. And so, you know, is that really a state? What I find is the higher you resonate, you happen to just be in what Taoists call the mother of all things, the Tao, what we call the Wu Ji, the stillness. That means that a Taoist perspective is life is yin and yang, the two sides of a mountain. You walk up the mountain and the, the, the goal of a Taoist is to hit that point of being realized as all things. When I when I engage in things that are of a higher frequency, there is no title to the experience. So if I'm operating and, and witnessing a physical healing, 
I'm not sitting there calling in my guide, sitting in a lotus position, right, lighting three incense and call, uh, calling in Kumbaya to generate this manifestation. It comes because there's no title, place, person, or thing. There is no Brandon. There is no Sun Ching. There is no camera. There is nothing. You become one. And that then transmutes into a, a, a validation when I teach people how to do things like bend metal with your mind using that frequency. It's a frequency. And that frequency comes from the vibration. The vibration is the energy. And then the only way it will become real to you is you're able to resonate with it. So if I use that model of understanding, you're resonating with a certain state of belief system and it's materializing more and more evidence that this is true to you. I mean, that's the simplicity of it. Now, you can then take or leave that, but generally speaking, there, there could be some sort of space for that being you know, more fortified or more realistic to an understanding of what you're perceiving. But then there's a message that's telling you, this is all bad. This is shitty, man. And I keep seeing more and more evidence of this very like uh, trap that we're living in on planet Earth that is not good. It's bad. Does that make any sense? Yeah, you've, you've nailed it, man. I mean, that's, yeah, that's how it feels. And it's this, again, um, paradox because, okay, perhaps there are some modalities here that would alleviate or change or give a better perspective that I'm unwilling to partake in. So again, I'm not doing psychedelics. I'm not doing energy healing. I'm not doing any of that shit. I tried the meditations. I wrote all the mantras. I did all the affirmation. I did all the stuff. I've met with so many people with so many different perspectives, modalities, all sorts of things. And so again, this is very outsourced thing up until a few months ago. And when I went within, this is what I saw again. So if I'm not distracted by other people, making sure that they are articulate enough to be able to convince me that their method and modality worked out for them so well that it's going to work out for me. Then if I'm not able to fall into that, then I'm not able to partake in it. And, and the, the point I've reached is sort of this idea to where I don't trust any of it, dude. Like I don't trust any of it. <laughs> and whenever people walk around talking about Jesus or anybody, honestly, uh, their spiritual practice, this modality, this idea, this, whatever, yeah, I yeah, look yeah. at it like you've all just joined a bunch of different gangs in a, a prison to get a by. Cult. Yeah. Like well, yeah, but but worse, you've joined a cult under false pretenses. You've joined it under the thought that this is actually going to work out and this place is good for you or that there's something amazing to be had here that's benevolent. But if you look at it from a certain lens, and again, terrified by the lens, not a fan, then it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like all this is is a bunch of big distractions. Now, let's take it one step further, okay? Let's say that the fourth dimension is exactly that. And let's say that our third dimension here is meant to be a crucible of a kind. It's meant to absolutely strip you of all things and you are going to go through absolute hell here. And Buddha nailed it with the, that life is suffering, right? And maybe fourth dimension makes sure that that suffering occurs here because it's mutually beneficial. How would you do that? In a system, you would say fourth dimension. If you don't make sure that these people have a shit time from their perspective, you don't survive. The only energy you get, fourth dimension, is from making sure you terrify these poor fucks. Now, let's say our next job is to go into the fourth dimension and terrify the third dimension, and that's our next evolution. And there is no fucking fifth, man. There's just this and that. And you go from being terrified to terrified. And maybe the yin-yang is that, and it's fourth to third, fourth to third, and that's what you do. Maybe you spit out of a vagina, your mom's vagina, every single time, and you have the exact same let, let's say Groundhog Day experience, but it's just stretched over out over 80 or 90 years or so. And in that right. time, you you fill your mind and your time with all sorts of shit. And then also the simulation is going to give you some UFOs, a Bigfoot out there, all these myriad of experiences that people can then share with you. It, it's just interesting and fascinating. And again, if you kind of just take it for what it is as a system, it's beautiful. It's not good for us, but it's beautiful and it works perfectly. Again, I'm not a, not a fan, dude. Um, but it feels like a lot of the things that people do here is just to get by, to buy time. Now, miraculous healings and near-death experiences are an interesting one too because why would not Why would you even let somebody come back and talk about it? So I think that it's sort of ensuring that their crop does well. You know what I mean? If a farmer doesn't go out and tend to his broken leg on his cow, then he doesn't eat his family maybe that month. So yeah, miraculous healing would probably be good for that entity if you've got a lot of people feeding on you. Another sort of interesting point to this is the subjectivity of the contact phenomena, the UFOs and all that kind of stuff is that it seems to be that they get like one type of entity. Maybe they get the reptilians, and that's it. You get reptilians for life. Or 
you get pimped out to the greys from the reptilians. And so there's like this change of hand, but it's a very consistent contact. So what's interesting in that is it's sort of like they're your, you're their resource. You're their own little private energy pod here. And so, yes, they're going to implant you with shit. And yes, they're going to bring you on board their craft to make sure that their crop is in good health. And then when you think of the contact phenomenon and how it contacts through generations, it's a bloodline thing. So almost like your hybridization of animals or something, and you're seeing your crop over generations and how it produces more or less louche for you. Now, if you look at this again at scale and you think of generations past, are we any better? Do we live any more secure or are we more scared now? Is there more shit jumping out at us constantly in this fucking haunted house we live in to scare us to get our louche? And I would answer yes. I would say that that's where the entropy comes in. But I think that what this is a mark of is that the system itself has gotten really, really great. And I think that really soon, and a lot of people have talked about this, Howdy as well as Jason Bashir's with the Phoenix Cycle, things like this, these long cycles, we get a reset here. But the reset is a copy of this reality, and then it gets worse. So the whole point is to get it to an apex of Max Lush extraction, copy it, and then implement the new program, which would then be more of an AI thing, I think. Um, more of a less interface from our energy to it. There's a lot of signal loss with that, just kind of grabbing it out of the air with a straw. So maybe they interface with us with technology and this next step of transhumanism is sort of this next reality. And it's just interesting when you sort of ponder these things and look at it at scale again and take yourself out of the equation emotionally because it doesn't. it's not like good for you to sit here and think, oh, I'm food. But I feel like I'm the shrimp that's sort of calling everything out. Like, guys, we're on the fucking menu, man, you know? And I'm doing my best to become unpalatable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, absolutely. I, you know, channeling and doing, uh, working with the spirit realm for over 30 years. Um, 30 years ago, uh, a ticket to a one-way trip to a psych ward in a padded cell was uh, not an option. And that's where a lot of people would turn up on my doorstep. Exorcisms, house clearings, all that kind of good stuff. And it really is absolutely subject to the individual's experience. I'm not going to come across, a, I don't put a sign out going, hey, look, I'm looking for a lower frequency, demonic, sort of Satanistic images of what you perceive as evil. Now, it comes up in the individual's field. That's my observation. That's how I have dealt with these very, you know, framework constructs and it's very easy to erase this stuff from an energetic perspective because everything is still energy even at whatever frequency it's at or whatever vibration it transmutes itself into the very flesh and blood the tissue that you perceive as your human body and it surrounds you with this perception of what it is um and then you come you know to the full circle of of in the last three months because I, you know, when I do aura readings, I just look at someone's auric field, and and it creates. I'm able to see what what is related to the individual. What what do they value? What what are they being driven by? And I'll just spit off a bunch of information. People are like, holy shit, how the how did you know that? Well, it's just sitting in your field. It's just sitting there. Now you can validate it by many different ways, like within uh, sort of like a, 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 an understanding of the very psychology of a human being, you know, the idiomotor response in relation to some type of transmission, your thoughts are transmitted out into your uh, Taurus field that gives you a, a basic fundamental idea of who that person is. Now, this is stuff I teach people from a, from a reading energy, energetic, like dowsing sort of like a uh, skill set that's very ancient, or you can go down to, you know, someone as simple as like heart math and have them measure the, the packets of information that are being projected from your, your heart into your magnetic electromagnetic field that will, they've got an 80% variable, but generally 80% of the time they can measure someone's emotional state quite accurately just by the, the Taurus field. And so there are other ways to measure this stuff. We kind of do it the old school way. But, I mean, the reality is, is okay, now we have um, yourself as subject to being, as you would mention, uh, the louche. Again, you're a magnet. If you understand that from, a, from an energetic perspective, you're still magnetizing what it is. And from if you, if you believe the universe is, doesn't have a moral compass 
and you're sort of because there is fundamentals to what you're saying that sounds very similar to a law of assumption, a law of attraction in this type of framework. And this is how some manifesto would look at it. It's like, well, you're using the law of assumption. You're assuming that this will be, and it will be, and it will be materials. This is how people all day, every day manifest quite a few things and they continue to repeat it because they love this law of assumption and the, the law of attraction in of itself are probably two of the same. And by doing that, you're, you know, like that scene out of Oliver the movie, you want more? Can I have more, sir? Well, you're getting more. I mean, that's just an angle that I'm sort of looking at from what you're sharing with me. Is it right or wrong? No, it's just how I'm I'm looking at it at a different angle and how you're sharing that information, how you're perceiving it. What's what's experiential? Where's the empirical data? I don't know. I know it's an experience-based thing that you're having right now and you're being able to add up all those pieces. I think maybe sharing more of this epiphany that you had from a couple of months ago, the dark night of the soul that made it absolutely unshakable in your reality. What, what was it was the turning point, Brandon? Yeah, it was, um, it was a visualization I had and I was, so we have a 12 acre piece of property here. My wife and I live on and two acres around the house here um, is just for us and the dogs. And we have 10 acres where we have our donkeys. That's where we keep the pond and all that. Mm -hmm. So, in that two acre part, there's an acre back here um, that I mowed a path through. Okay. It's, it's a labyrinth, right? It goes one way in one way out, but it's about 1300 steps. Right. And so I go out there and walk barefoot in this thing all the time. And I just mow a path, let everything else grow up right now. It's springtime in Texas. So all the flowers are coming up. The butterflies are coming through. It's amazing. It's a, and I walk it year round. I mean, 30 degrees out, I'm walking barefoot out there and, and that's fine. So it's just a track that I walk, right? And it's how I think. It's how I meditate. I don't do the sit down, quiet, meditate thing. It's never been efficient for me. It's it's always been a barrage. And I've just, uh, always found it way more uncomfortable and couldn't get past whatever. So I'm a moving meditation kind of guy, right? If I'm mowing, it takes hours to mow out here. I call it meditation. And so I'll mow for hours and hours and I really get deep into this. So I was walking out there and having just a real fucking rough time, man. And it was about a month into this that I just felt that I had something on me, like um, like on my back, like that I was wearing like a backpack, um, but that was coming out of the middle of my back. It was nasty. It was gnarly. It was an attachment, right? A parasite. And what it did was, is it for my whole life had been there and had been, had a little fishing rod with um, not a carrot on the end of it, but a screen that overlaid my reality. Okay. And this thing that was attached to me fed off of my negative emotions. Okay. Now it would show me things and cast a net over the top of me that I could see clearly that would highlight things in my reality that I would go through and go, holy shit, yeah, 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 let's go there. But it knew that going down that trail would lead me to a lot of luge payoff for it. Now, this is how I looked at everything that I was attempting for years and years and years. I saw absolute progression, massive talent, amazing things happening, huge beginner's luck streak, and then fallout, absolute depression, luge, nothing and no strength to get over it no feeling that i was learning something no higher power coming in telling me that i was going to be okay none of that shit it just an absolute bottom of the barrel loosh right loosh 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 now when i saw this i saw that that was the that was the basis of my cycles that's what felt like what was going on and what was going on with everyone that no one is seeing this place from an altruistic point of view they are seeing it from a skewed point of view from the from the perspective of their benefactor, which is stuck on them. Okay, now it's tricky to sort of say that this is it, but this is what it felt like, man. And um, it didn't feel like I had control over it. It didn't feel like I put it there. It felt like the modus operandi, and it felt like what everyone is feeling. It feels like everyone here is living their own illusion based off of the benefit of something stuck to them that they don't have 100% control over. Now, um, I think that this operates on a deeper level or what this leads me to feel is that it operates on a deeper level, meaning that when you're there and let's say the soul contract thing, I know you're not a subscriber of it, but let's say that there is a beginning point to your life where you're mapping out sort of, oh, I'm going to meet my wife here and I'm going to have this cool experience and oh, waterfalls are great. That's going to be cool. And you're doing that right in a room. But let's say that in another room behind you, the real driving force, the real benefactor of this whole thing is behind a mirrored glass. And they're saying, hell yeah, when they go to that waterfall and, oh man, when he meets his wife, she's going to die 10 years later of horrible cancer. We're going to get a great payoff there. And then they're going to have kids and he's actually going to have an alcohol problem. And then that's going to make sure that we breed three more little loose farms for us. And so when you look at this place as a trauma factory, number one, 
because we've all been through this fucked, fucked, fucked up trauma, okay? Then what you come to is this idea that it's actually trauma-based mind control, meaning that it's going to fucking, it's going to terrorize you and then let up for a second. And you're going to be okay with it letting up for a second and do anything it wants because it just let up for a second. Then you get to Stockholm Syndrome the longer you're alive. Then as you get to the end of your life, you sort of get into the thought that the, then you, that's where you approach the end of your life, your death, which means that you've been traumatized this entire time. You've been, you've been granted a few sp sprinkles of consideration here and there, and we can say that, okay? But again, motive to keep moving forward. Now, let's say you get to the end of your life, and then now trauma-based mind control comes in because now you're greeted with archons that want you to go into some light that they say is going to relieve you of all your pain, go through a quick life review. But what they do is, is that they give you and this has been a lot of people. They don't give you an unbiased life review. They give you 80% of the shittiest shit you did, and then they make you judge yourself. And then you will hop back into that light to fix it. It's a, it's a revolving door philosophy that whenever you get traumatized for so long, you have an out-of-body experience, near-death experience, you relieved of this trauma for a second, just the weight of gravity, right? Now, when you experience that, you'll do anything to get it again. So if these beings tell you, hey, hop into light, you're good, or hey, make sure you go back and tell everybody to go into the light, or make sure you go back and start practicing Reiki, because now we get to implant ourselves into a lot of people and now skew their perspectives, right? So again, I don't think anything here is untouched by this shit. I think that there's a lot of hubris in folks that think that we're the top of the food chain, because I think that we are the food here. And it's, again, I don't want to think this way. I'm not a fan of this perspective. I'm, I'm looking very forward to shedding it all together and integrating it in a way that I can alchemize this into some power because there's a lot of power in this. And I don't know what it is yet, but it's here and it's very prevalent. So that's sort of what I think about it, man. Well, with that said, would you ponder, potentially um, consider that you're being controlled to even think this way also yeah oh god yeah yeah absolutely like that's the whole thing right and then even when howdy minkowski came in i told him on our episode i was an honor to talk to the guy amazing dude but even i told him dude i was at my darkest point ever i'm at the total other end of this bullshit spirituality thing i want nothing to do with it and then all of a sudden <laughs> your perspective pops in at the same time that i felt like i had some damn thing attached to me an energy attachment i didn't know how to explain it I start reading Howdy's work. I'm like, holy shit, all this makes complete sense for where I am right now. I even told him this. Again, dude, I'm very self-aware. Like, I'm very like, I know I feel this way, but I only feel this way because of this. So it's not like, I can't even get fooled by myself, right? And so with this, I even told him on the show, I said, well, what if you're, you're a PSYOP? And what if you're, you know, a whole uh, mis, um, misinformation campaign unbeknownst to you that's actually telling people to not go to the light, which is an even worse consideration for us? Because right. now... It makes people terrified of even death, right? It makes you like, well, shit, am I going to get, I got to throat, throat chop grandma to get by there because it's not really grandma. It's an archon pretending to be grandma to get me to trick me to come back here, right? And so mm -hmm. I even told him, I go, dude, your name is Howdy. It's spelled H-O-W-D-I-E, how die, how to die. I go, so <laughs> you could be just a huge psyop with all this. And he agreed. <laughs> he said, absolutely. So again, I'm not any like... I'm not attached to the idea. I'm ready to not see it as the most, the thing that I see the most intellectually and I can wrap my mind around because this place is riddled with paradox. The only thing that undoes the paradox is this, is flit, right. picking it, putting it in like dark matter. And then cool. the other thing is I feel it so deeply that I'm just, again, so if it's this is based on your feelings and all that. Then... Right, right. That I mean, I was just going to bring your attention to that because in my opinion, for doing this as long as I have it, it has everything to do with your feelings. Yeah. So, and this sucks. You know, like, I don't want to feel like this. I well, really don't. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, have you ever, you, you, you said you meditate. And I mean, what does meditation mean to you? I mean, it's really just being aware, right? Uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's it. And it's, it's one of these things also. And this is why I say about emotions um, is I don't feel in control of this at all. Um, there's a dude that steps in every now and then and he takes over and he's not fun to be around. I want him nowhere near a microphone. I want him nowhere near anybody. And um, I do not have control over that. It's, it's something that steps in and takes over. So what is that shit about? You know, it, is it something um, and it's a complete extreme. It's like a bipolar, again, mental disorder kind of thing you're talking about. But it's manifesting as reality in this life that I'm very aware of. I'm very aware of it. And I'm not an alcoholic. I, I quit drinking. I don't, you know, I'm one of the most sober people you ever meet. And so it's not an influence and I'm not rushing to numb it. This is the thing. I'm feeling it fully. And I think that this is one of the, 
the more challenge, uh, the more challenging aspect of this is I'm not numbing it. I'm just feeling the shit out of it, which is, it sucks, dude. And, um, yeah, that's well, just kind of where it's at. Like I said, well, when you say feeling the shit out of it, have you, have you embodied any sort of like knowing that everything is energy? Would you agree? Everything's energy. Uh, I don't have, I don't experience life this way. I can intellectually look at that. People will say that this ra place runs energetically, but I have a separation of what I'm experiencing to that energy is what pervades this, but I don't feel that I have control over the frequency of energy. So the, here's where okay. the other part gets to is this idea that, Hey, you can do this. Hey, if you just this enough, then you'll that right. It's it, because then it's still Newtonian at, at that level. It means that if, as long as you're doing X, Y, and Z in the external, which reflects in your internal, then X, Y, and Z will work out on the other end. But again, I don't, I don't feel this. I feel it's something that you can, you can be convinced of. And so therefore, again, you will create that in your reality. I'm here for the real shit. You know, the unbiased, real, unadulterated, didn't hear this from someone else. And then it happened to work out for me, the real right. connective shit. Right. So, so have you ever experienced energetic practices of any kind? Yeah, I mean, I've done like the Reiki stuff um, and could feel something. But again, I don't I've also done ecstasy. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of skewed on the thought that people can give energy healing and then it not be again, have some sort of invisible hand to us and have mo motives that you're unaware of because things like love, hope, all of that can be simulated. It's called MDMA. And it's amazing. When you take it, you <laughs> love the whole fucking world. But who's to say again, that that's not instantly accessible to you at any time? I have heard of near-death experiences and contact cases that will say, hey, uh, out-of-body experiences as well. Hey, uh, imagine anything you want. And then they'll imagine that and they'll feel the shit out of it. They'll say, okay, now imagine that and they'll feel the shit out of it. Right. Okay, so if you ha if something has access for you to feel the shit out of something anytime mm -hmm. it wants and it doesn't have to justify its existence to you at all, it may touch in every now and then and kind of give you a sprinkle, but it doesn't have to say shit to you. Again, the farmer doesn't have to care about the cows. It, there's no reason for it to have an altruistic relationship for it. So it's, again, just very interesting when you look at it from this perspective. Well, I mean, it's just identifying this state of consciousness. And I use consciousness. You may not refer to it as consciousness, but I mean, you're, you're just shifting gears. And that's what I teach people to shift gears. You want to feel something. You can feel it instantaneously. You don't want to feel it. You don't ever have to feel it. And But it's about... Thoughts, feelings, and emotions, that's the sum of your whole secret source of your reality. And from my opinion, that's it. That's, that's all it is. And so that thought will evoke an emotion that creates the feeling and, and generally moves in that order. Now, people will split hairs on the emotion and the feeling as being the same, but they're fundamentally not. And if you slow things down enough, you can see what leads, what chases the tail. You know the feeling I mean? gets you to do the thing that leads to the emotion of the loose trap whenever you finally fall into it is how I see it. Yes. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. you know, so it, it's being able to master that is having control, which you confess you don't have control. But also that, that again, is a sort of confession or an option, in my opinion. I don't see it as not possible you know what i mean so it's like a glass half empty or half full you've confessed that you believe you don't have control over this stuff and it comes into you and you know it's just all bad it sucks man everything yeah, it blows and nobody's going hey i'm archangel michael because i'd tell him to fuck <laughs> off anyway you know i don't want to talk to him I, I want the real shit you know it seems like i get a lot of lessons a lot of growth all that yeah, yeah, none yeah. of the hey it's going to be okay is you know none of the it's all going to work out or here's a greater perspective, even, even just for a moment, you know, and this is why I was such um, so into psychedelics when I was younger. And now I don't want anything to do with them. Um, right. I was so into psychedelics when I was younger because I was looking for that. I'm looking for that connection. I want to connect. I'm ready to do something big and massive. And that was the biggest shift I'd felt in perception just simply because it was so bizarre, right? Because it's so wild. But again, I knew it was unaltruistic. I knew it wasn't really connecting with something. I knew it was me chemically altering myself temporarily to then experience that. Now, on a deep level also, you can say, well, when you chemically alter yourself to temporarily experience that, you connect to a deeper level and you get all this awesome understanding and shit. And what's funny about that is, is that, yeah, maybe, but when you come back, it's all ineffable. You can't describe it. And there's no point in having it other than to say that it was an amazing experience which is fine i'm fine with those like i'm not I, i'm i'm here for all of it right 
But what's interesting about this too is again, like the shit that you can experience over there can again just be these layers of deception. And that's honestly what I feel like this place is. And I'm I'm not again a fan of seeing it like this. I'm I'm really ready to see this place is honestly just not this really like anything else other than this but um but what but, would it take for you to that's the thing your position i am inconsolable on it right now and that's the whole point <laughs> is that i've reached a point intellectually to where i can i will dismiss anything amazing that happens to prove one thing or another because i've got so many guards up against that it's being altruistic because i don't have experiences of that and every time I've attempted to connect with the only answer I've gotten or the feeling I've gotten that I could connect with something gave me the emotion of that I couldn't. And so then it hits you in your worthies, right? It hits you in the, well, what's wrong with me? Why can't I? Why isn't my vibration good enough? Why isn't the meditation practices I'm okay with good enough, right? And then you end up again at your inevitable preference. You know, if I was able to go live in a um, mountain and dry a wet blanket on my shoulders in the snow seven times, then cool, but I'm not. And so... If that's my way to ultimate enlightenment, then I'm fucked, right? And so there's this interesting <laughs> level of layers of programming um, that also coincide with your psychosis, man. It's very fascinating, dude. And it seems like the perfect prison, I'll be honest with you. It's a, it's a beautiful mechanism. I hate yeah. that I feel it's a prison, but it's what it feels like, and it's beautifully ran. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, I mean, well, it still comes back to something that we both fundamentally believe in. It's your truth and that's it. It's yeah. Comes yeah. Down to what, how you, how you're perceiving it and what you've experienced to validate the very position you're in right now. And, the, and, and I, I support it 1 million percent because that's, that's all you got. Yeah. That's, that's all you got. And, and so um, if you were, if, if you had, the inkling or idea that you were looking for something greater, I'd be the guy to to show you that. But you're you're already you through your own admission said I will dismiss all things. It doesn't matter whether it's, whether you know a million dollars materializes three seconds after I say I want a million dollars and they're sitting right there on, in a bag of cash in front of you, you're still going to dismiss it. I'd be pissed it took so long or I'd be pissed that, <laughs> you know what I mean? So there, there's like all these layers to this that, uh, yeah, man, are making me not able to receive. I'm just not open to receive in a way that I don't feel like it's anything's out there for me anymore. And this is what sucks, dude, because I haven't tried everything. I haven't explored everything. I haven't um, seen all that's out there. And I know that one of those little things, and this doesn't tie into cognitive dissonance. So there's a fine balance here that I'm not unwilling to take in new information. It's, it's that the quality or the... Uh, I'm going to say just the due diligence on the part of the people providing the information is going to be something if it's experientially motivated, right? If it's a healing or something like that is I've just, I don't think that I've got, how many have you seen? Uh, what do you mean? Like miraculous I mean, healings and stuff? Yeah. Miraculous. How many have you seen? None. I mean, no, but you can, <laughs> it's, it, I'm just saying yeah. this with, with open arms, a lot of people have that position and, because they've never experienced it. Yeah. And the thing is, is that even if you do experience it, then what I would get pissed about is that not all miracles can just happen like that. Why you? Can, why do anybody need to suffer if anybody can be miraculously healed at all? I get pissed. Right. Again, this is the nails on the highway thing. Okay. Right. This is what I mean. I'm, I'm systemically upset at this place as a whole. Literally hate the world. Okay. <laughs> and this is the thing is it's like this. <laughs> fuck this it. place on a deep 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 yeah. level that yeah. no yeah. amount of meditation will heal for me that, and that's so how i feel about it it sounds like my dear friend hans wilhelm he says uh i'm i'm making sure i'm not creating any more karma because i i don't want to come back uh, i'm done i'm and, good i want to yeah. just i want to and that's his model and i mean again karma to me is only subject to to the individual's belief system. So if you walk under a ladder and you believe you're going to have bad luck, well, I promise you that'll happen. Now, if you walk under the ladder and you believe you're going to have good luck, I promise you that'll happen too, because that's, that's the variable. That's the simplicity of it. And it will be shown to you, whatever you resonate with, right? On an unconscious level, on a deeper level, you have all this incredible positivity that you refuse to reveal even though it shows itself to you because your life doesn't suck that badly no 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 and there's plenty to take away like there's yeah. like amazing things here and i've still got a lot of light in there it's just dimmed the fuck out right now and <laughs> that's it dude that's and that's what's so funny about this this is a temporary truth i hope i mean i hope it follows through that 
like what anything your, in life, it's been a temporary thing that it, it'll your, all get over it. What does your wife say? I mean, because she's, she's here for the whole part. thing. She's incredible. Absolutely. I've, I've got the best like, partner in the world, dude. I mean, like, have you ever seen that movie, um, Towering Inferno? No, no, but we'll okay. check it out. Yeah, it's 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 just basically you know people realize this this building is burning down and they're at the top floor, very reminiscent of uh, a, a major event here in this country. And there's this panic mode. People just drop into a state where they're familiar. Their default is just fear and and dismay. And it's like someone's just panicking, like just arms just everywhere and a guy grabs her and slaps her across the face and say wake up oh i'm so sorry i have no idea what i was doing and because you're just that present moment is so unreal that you just fall into the default and i don't know i i can see a default which is you perceived as your reality then it comes right back to what you're validating which is this is the whole point it's it's this it, this is the psyop up with it a psyop up with it a psyop up that nailed it, it. screwing m with my mind that that's exactly what you're showing me and um i would say that again we're, we, i mean you're definitely going on the the intellect component is is probably from a tom campbell position you know he even though he's a physicist he had to learn to be left brain he literally is intuitive in every sense of the word that he would take 1% of his reality is, is, can, is, has to be used in this intellectual based uh, perception and the rest of it is intuitive based. And that's really not really how most people work. They don't wake up going, I'm creative and I'm just all these things. Yet again, you've confessed to being, you know, uh, an artist and a musician and all these kind of good things. So it's, it, it, it's, I, it comes right back to what I say. It's like your truth is the only truth because you're being validated by the very experience that you're having, which then would come back to the the fundamental understanding that this is a simulation. That we're, I mean, and woo, here's the crux of it, know, right? We can dive the, in right there. The crux of all of it, man, I'm serious, is, is that it seems to be out of my hands in a way that it's meant to happen in a way that it's valuable at some point. Now, that's what I'm holding on to, honestly. This is my yeah, hope, yeah. is that it's valuable yeah. at some point right, because right. not a fan. I mean, if I had a choice, which I feel like I felt like I did, then this isn't the choice I would have made, okay? Right, right. So right. what's interesting about this, if there's anything to where the Vesica Pisces, right, to where the overlap of the you can create your reality versus you don't have any damn free will, and there's actually archons running this place. There's a middle ground there that I know that I haven't found yet. But in it, I know that that's also where maybe some truth can be found. Let's say that, yes, archons and shit are here. And let's say everything I fear is absolutely what's going on. You are in a fucking prison. You are food source for something. Its job is to scare the shit out of you because that's what gives it its food. But the trade-off is, is that you learn and you get wisdom and that you still get to kind of see waterfalls, you know, every now and then if you're not paying attention to the bobcat tearing the um, squirrel apart in front of you because it has to survive and that's just what they do. And if you can get over the screaming, eventually it'll stop and then you can realize that God's place is so beautiful and perfect. Like, this is the thing is if you can get through that part of it, then there's some beauty here. And the modus operandi of this place is where, again, the nails on the highway is where I feel my focus has been lately. And why I don't care for it is because it's a perfect system operating that way. It does seem to be a fucking torture trauma chamber where you're tricked into constantly accruing more trauma and that you're supposed to heal, but you can never get to the bottom of it because of your subconscious actions. Many stories of that. But this, again, you're inability to have 100% validation for your consciousness the whole time here is what's so concerning to me is that screen memories you could just be switched off you could be hypnotized you can any of these things uh, unbeknownst to you so this calls into a, a great deal of sovereignty to me and I'm a big sovereign person man and so when it hits me in the sovereignty this is where I get this is where my fear is revealed yes absolutely you is see because I, I, I would just say I, I feel like that word is sort of part of the psyop right now. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to keep using that within the algorithm, but let's just listen to what I'm saying in the sense of, and I brought my friend's attention to this, and he's a big Palladians, Galactic Federation guy. He's into aliens and all that kind of stuff. And I said, you guys use this word, which you just used, many times over. Have you ever thought about what that really means? But you're, you're bringing attention to yourself from another level, from another energy that uh, could potentially come from organizations with three-letter words that want to hear you say this over and over again because it identifies 
who you are in the scheme of things on a bigger level. Does this make sense to you? Oh yeah. We talk about this. I'm on a sovereign I, Rangers team. Yeah. We're, right. we're very so, forward thinking with our freedom. R- yeah. Right. So I, I, I kind of like hear this and I'm like, it's almost like you, you, you're in the say up to bring attention to yourself about your very thoughts and your belief systems to be subject to the interrogation of, of some, something that feels as though it has more control over you than your very thoughts. And so, you know, it, it, it's an interesting perplexing thing and then he and then he looked it up and he's like oh my goodness in definition um i don't know what what context he looked it up but it was like actually in definition it has something to do with controlling your very mind and i was like whoa and and where did that come from and 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 it was uh i think it was in the context of uh uh uh, etymology or something of that nature but the, he was looking it up and going oh that's not what it actually means from the people that keep using it over and over again holy crap well, the way people are describing it is a sovereign citizen now a citizen means a slave sovereign means a free individual that reigns over yourself 100 percent. okay yeah. so when you put those two together yes that's an oxymoron that's how you can tell the people who are not doing this the right way okay <laughs> right, right, is that's right. your red flag okay but right, right. If, if you're talking about on on a deep level with like your ability to make free choices with your body, with your mind, with your emotions, then I think it's fascinating that anyone can say that 100 percent of their thoughts are their own. Can you say that? Well, that your no, thoughts well, are your well, own? The, the baseline of a Taoist is this. All thoughts you remind are not yours. And right. so that 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 people go, what? And and I, I lead after that with when you believe you're not of this body, what can harm you? And then they're like, whoa. Whoo, whoo. And then I'll add one more. If you have to learn it, you don't know it. If you know it, you don't have to learn it. Yeah, it's, it's shit like that. That I, I think it's fun. I used to think it's fun, and now I found well, fucking it, maddening. It's and it's like because that. there's no – because it's so – um, and I say this with love, dude, masturbatory. Yeah. It feels yeah. like it's yeah. such a paradox of saying that you got to believe to see, but you got to see to believe. You know, it's this – um, I won't know how to swim until I'm in the water, but you're scared of the water because you don't know how to swim. It's this – Again, modus operandi. Okay. Then again, you're, about- you're, you're leading your very notion of understanding what the truth is to you by a knowing that you have. I just know this is twisted. I know that this is off. I know there's a loosh that's feeding from us. It's It seems to be apparent to me over and over again. There's a knowing that you're having that's validating the very position that you're standing by. In the same way that your knowing validates exactly. yours, which is sure. fascinating. So here's right. what's here's what's so interesting <laughs> about this. And I don't deny this at all. And this is what's beautiful about this. I'm not convincing yeah. anybody I'm right or that they're yeah, wrong because yeah, yeah. I have no clue. But I absolutely agree that you have a perspective that you're offering because that's that's your truth. That's your experience. Now, yeah. I, again, what's so fascinating about this is, is that from that perspective, you are playing a position in a role. And it's guiding you to make certain decisions, to contact with certain people, to do certain things, and to see your world, your RAS, your reticular activating system, has now been programmed to see what's useful and to hide what's useless. And what's useless in your life are things that contradict that in a way. Not You're not one, though, to steer away from thoughts and actions. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in your reality, you will find things that now constantly reinforce what your paradigm is, right? Your experiences and beliefs. Mm-hmm. Now, I've done my best to have a paradigm to look at this place as amazing and yes there was some spiritual bypassing that occurred in that because i needed to convince myself as i watched these horrible things around me that it was not the end all be all and that there was a greater purpose for this but when i look at it when i look at the way i interpret information the information that's available to me the way in which you govern your emotions and then react respond all of that times cycles all of that it seems so contrived, meaning that it's so uh, narrated. Narrated. It's a it's a script that's already sort of been there. And the whole reason for this is that I'm playing an energetic part that's valuable for some reason. You're playing an energetic part that's valuable for some reason. We need the air quotes sheeple around here for us to have a point of perspective for reference, right? To see where our growth has occurred, what we would like to see different, where our changes are, where we can enhance and expand, blah, blah, blah. But all of those people are playing their roles perfectly as well. Even the people that won't, air quotes, wake up. Okay, so again, this thing, this seems to be, yes, an energetic balance of all energies, but it's motivated by some force outside of you that you're just sort of on the ride for. Now, again, my issue is I have preference. I don't want to be 
I don't want to hand shoved up my ass and my mouth talk like a puppet. Okay. <laughs> so this is where I run into that sovereign thing and not a sovereign citizen, by the way, I'm very aware of the difference and I'm grateful yeah. you pointed it out. Yeah. So again, it feels that you are compelled to play the role you're playing. I'm compelled to be where I'm at right now. No amount of me wishing it was different or manifesting my new perspective or reading good books or dancing or any of the things that I feel good about have shaken this absolute clear perspective I have and that I'm wearing for this moment, right? This VR headset that I'm wearing for this yeah. moment. I'm looking forward to it augmenting something different. But again, it feels like it's got to be a necessary part yeah. here because there's something greater energetically going on that, again, if we had control over, it wouldn't exist at all. Uh, well, looking at the time we're at right now, I feel like we just haven't even got started. I told you I was. <laughs> we got to do this again. You're amazing. I, I we will have to do this again. Point of time and space, my friend. See, already. <laughs> time isn't real, but time right? is everything, and, right? And, and so, you know, Brandon would go, the guy hypnotized me. That's how it worked. That's what happened. He hypnotized me. That's how I ended up here for two hours. What's going on? I love it. And, and so what I want to do is I want to already invite you back and I want to have this conversation in the near future, potentially in the next couple of weeks or a month or so, because I want to expand on this. We've got so much to offer the audience in just the way that we uh, are, are just offering our insight. I think it's so powerful what you're saying and what you're you're sharing and, and how that People resonate with this stuff, my friend. In one way, shape, or form, they see what they see and exactly going right back to what we talked about. It, it all has to do with that feeling and it this will help someone understand something about their experience, whatever that might be. It's really powerful. But I would like to invite you back on the podcast in the next month or so so we can go deeper on this because well, I don't even think we got started, quite frankly. No, not at all. I would be honored, my friend. It's been amazing. I would love that. So in closing for today, I would ask you a simple question. What's your definition of consciousness? Loosh. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> loosh is the energy you put off. Your consciousness is the thing that drives you to all of those loosh points in between. But along the way, I think it plays dual duties. It obviously animates this this uh, existence that we live in, but also it it's it creates the road as you drive on it. And it's an interesting sort of thing this idea of consciousness right is it animating all of us independently is it animating this reality in a sense to where there is a cohesive uh consensus reality of sorts where if we see a tree we see the same tree um it's i feel that it and some level is and this is a lot of programming is some sort of daddy figure this like govern me harder god daddy figure that it's kind of testing little pieces of itself and makes little bets with Satan off to the side or right as a metaphor, not as literal. Um, that also just sort of pits you through things to see if you are going to pass or not. And lately I felt like that's been the, the biggest thing, but I don't feel like I've been doing well, which is the other part, right? So it's an opportunity and worthiness in all kinds of things that you transcend through consciousness. Now, again, I think that um, people again say the time's not real, all that kind of shit, but, but time's not real, but timing is everything. And so we're given the opportunity to change in a duration over time. And if I had to say that um, I felt like this place was for our benefit, then I'd say awesome. And that actually we're learning a lot here and that uh, the growth is for something. Um, but also I think that it could be an animating force to keep you um, alive so that you can be the same consciousness <laughs> that animates a cow to be food for something. So I, I don't know. It. That's I where I'm it. at. I love it. I love it all. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing all your time today with us. I want to thank the audience. I'm going to put all Brandon's social under here, including his events, his website, his um, um, YouTube, Instagram, where to find him so you can look up um, his latest event that's coming up in May. But there's a lot, and I love it. I love it, my friend. Um, You're great. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, thank you, brother. So, again, I want to thank you. I want to thank the audience, and I'm your humble servant and seafood, Taoist Master Sun Ching, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Mm -hmm.